How's it going, everybody? I hope everybody's doing all right. Uh, I'd like to welcome and the newest tool to the shop is the rigid six and an eighth um, joiner. This thing is a beast. I'm going to tell you right now. Um, it was worth the extra money and spending rather than just getting a bench top joiner. Um, the video I put together, not so much of a, of a review, rather than just a nice, fun assembly assembly video for you to enjoy. Um, I looked around the YouTube channels and try, wanted to see whether or not somebody had some sort of assembly video. Um, there was one that I found, however, the quality of it wasn't so great and it was a distance away, uh, more of a time lapse rather than anything else. Um, this is just a fun little video I put together of showing how this rigid uh, joiner gets assembled. A um, couple things, it's heavy, very, very heavy. It took uh, three guys uh, from Home Depot to load it up on the cart. Uh, took three of us to push it onto the bed of the truck. Once I got it home, my dad brought his uh, dolly, basically a very strong one. We were able to pull it off the truck and rolled it into the shop. Once we got to the doorway of the shop, we had to push it all the way in. Now it's recommended, obviously, and I wouldn't recommend this any other way, um, at least two people to lift this thing up. Um, I did lift it myself. Um, during certain occasions during the assembly process um, as it was positioned right here the instructions themselves are very good to follow They're very easy no reason for me to say this has to go here this has to go there you follow those assembly instructions to the T and I guarantee you it'll come down it'll, it'll assemble just the way that you need it to um, the only problem that I had with this joiner and again I don't want to go into a review so much uh, regarding this joiner uh, before we enter the video but the, uh, the only, only issue that I had with this was the guard plate. Basically, it doesn't really close all the way as you pass a piece of wood. Just make sure it's unplugged before you start touching this area. Um, the, the guard plate, it doesn't, or the blade guard doesn't uh, close by itself like it should. However, this knob here, I'm not sure if there, needs, there has to be some tweaking. I need to read into it a little bit more. Um, however, it closes about halfway, depending on how far it extends open. If you're about to right here, it'll it pretty much closes about halfway. It's very easy to move back, but I expect it to fall back into place like that. So I'm not quite sure if this this knob that it has right here has to be adjusted somehow, or I need to throw some WD-40 on there. It's brand new, so I can't imagine anything being wrong with it, but maybe some sort of adjustment need to be made on this in order for it to basically wood, you know, cut through here. It should just close that way to make sure that nothing else gets in the blades. Um, unfortunately, it just kind of stops halfway. That's the only issue I have with this entire joiner. Everything else works perfect. Um, so other than that, it took about three hours. Uh, you'll see there in the video, um, I'm going very slow and quietly uh, while I'm assembling this. Um, be super quiet because I assembled this at five o'clock in the morning after I got off of work and the baby was sleeping in the house and I didn't want to make any any noise um, all the bolts um, this is all cast iron it's all metal I mean even the base when I first saw the base on on the re on the reviews or on uh, the internet I actually thought that this was plastic to be honest with you but it's it's, it's actually metal uh, very good thing everything's sturdy on this thing um, but everything makes noise when you put it together. Uh, you're gonna need, uh, well, I, what I used myself was some channel locks to you, to tighten all the bolts. Um, there's gonna be certain areas within the assembly that you'll need smaller pliers. Um, it recommends wrenches, obviously, and you know channel locks work just as good if you get the right angle on it. Um, but uh, pliers, the handle on the channel locks are just too long to fit into. I believe it was about two bolts that needed to get uh, tightened and the channel lock handles were just too long. So make sure you get yourself a nice little wrench um, of some sort that has a small handle, especially going through the, uh, the dust chute itself. There's a bolt that needs to get attached um, to the inner portion of the base and the channel locks, there's no way to reach those in there. So you have to use a small, either a small wrench or a small pair of pliers. Um, I, I prefer a, a, a pair of pliers, I'm sorry, a pair of pliers more than a wrench during the assembly just because of the grip. The other thing that I wanted to make mention, if you look down here, you have your small wrench and a small little Allen wrench here. This comes in the package with all the bolts and nuts and all the washers. Um, and uh, I initially thought that I was going to use this during the assembly 
It is not used for the assembly at all, so do not trash it. Um, it's actually used to be able to replace the blades, and it does come with a perfect spot for them to fit um, when not in use, so do not trash those at all. A couple little modifications here that I had to do. Um, this is this is a four inch dust chute, and my dust collection system runs off of a two and a, two and a half inch um, shop vac, basically. Uh, so I had to get some adapters here. This is a four to three. Um, I couldn't find a four to two, so this fits the four inch, adapts to a three inch, and then within the three inch there is a three inch piece of piping that also connects this three inch to a two inch so if you have the same issues that I have or you have the same setup in my sh in your shop like I do um, that's something that you want to think about purchasing um, this was all from the plumbing aisle and it works just as well as anything else all right just one last thing uh, you are going to want to build some sort of rolling base for this um, this thing so like I said it's heavy um, but it's not impossible to, to move without by yourself um, the only issue is you're going to have to keep lifting and pulling and it's sitting on some leveling feet right now so over time the, that rubber is just going to wear out and you'll be left with nothing but thread. So you do want to go ahead and build yourself a mobile base depending on where you're putting it. If you have it in a, a stationary area in your shop that you know that it's not going to move, um, you, you don't have to, uh, to build a base for it. but. Unfortunately for me, um, due to the size of my shop, uh, eventually, I mean, when, when I'm using this for small pieces of wood, I'm not going to have to move it. Uh, but for longer pieces, long, a longer stretch, I'm definitely going to have to move it because um, the infeed table is about two feet, maybe, from my, from my wall where it ends. Um, so something to think about. Um, and maybe that's something we'll do in the future for this. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to make it out of. A lot of people make it out of uh, just regular wood. Um, it's pretty heavy, so you know wood would would be sufficient depending on the size that you use. But at the same time, you know maybe you want to incorporate some sort of uh, bracket, some metal uh, bracket within there, within the uh, base itself, just to be able to to know that it won't ever basically deform uh, with the weight of the of the tool itself, and it'll just roll with some ease. Um, other than that, uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. If you guys have any questions about it, let me know. I can help you out as much as I can. Um, like I said, I just purchased this, so I don't have all the ins and outs about it. Um, but we'll get it to work, and we'll see what we can do, and maybe we'll find some things out together.